What is up? What is up? Welcome, welcome. Welcome in. Nice to have you. If you're just coming in, if you want to say hello, let me know that my uh, AV is coming in all right. Smash some likes and hearts and let us know that you're out there. That'd be great. All right, I see a bunch of you guys coming in. So again, if you're just coming in, Please feel free to say hello. Let me know you can hear me and see me all right. Smash some hearts, smash some likes. Let me know you're out there. Uh, I'm uh, solo missioning today on the Tuesday Lives. If you're brand new to the community, welcome, welcome in. Uh, usually we do this uh, as a duo with my brother, but he has been uh, patiently waiting for a house, a new home to be built in Florida, and they are in the final stages and signing some papers today. So he's got a take care of that right now all right so again welcome in say hello uh let me know you can hear me okay and uh we'll get we'll get rolling here in just a second okay uh if you are brand new to the community just want to give you a few little tips about how to navigate we do have a lot of resources for you here you're probably getting emails and texts from us and that's just us trying to use different mediums to uh get communication in today people are kind of all over the place uh hey everybody uh in terms of where they like to get get their medium, social media, email, text messages, um, all the messenger apps, right? It's, uh, we're trying to get you wherever you are and to get you the information that you signed up to get. Um, one of the primary things that I would recommend when you're just getting going in this community, and that's to get a, a taste and to start getting a sneak peek of what this work uh, that we do here provides for you, uh, is to take advantage of the meditation that we provide in the group. If you probably actually just scroll down a little bit on the news feed, you're going to see that we are currently holding a 30-day meditation challenge. So if you want, you can actually just uh, put it in there and then um, like just, just follow the instructions, put in meditation or put in meditation in the comment box uh, here in this live chat. And then someone from our team, uh, Tobias, Corey, Mel, Lynn, <laughs> Sarah, someone will see it and uh, send you the information uh, via messenger and then see if there's any other ways that we can support you. So just so you know, there is a whole team behind the scenes here of people in the group and people that we work with uh, personally who've been through this work, uh, who've been around uh, our ethos and community for a long time. And those are the people that uh, actually operate inside of our community. So if you have any questions, uh, if you need any support around some area of your life and you're looking for some guidance, you want to find out about the type of uh, services, programs, experiences that we offer here, uh, those are the people to talk to. And I think right above my head, you'll see a link there called callsatori.com. And at any time, you can book in a call with our team to uh, have a conversation with them, find out where resources are, and then see if the programs and experiences that we offer here would support your growth. Okay? So, um, Today, the, uh, the topic is, is how to get unstuck. And I also added, um, uh, oh, I don't know if it actually added in there for some reason. Maybe they changed the way this works. Uh, it's uh, how to get unstuck and also how to deal with uh, fears, right? Because if we are feeling afraid, yeah, it doesn't look like that came in for some reason. Uh, if, we're, if we're feeling afraid, um, we find ourselves inability to take action in our lives. And so for a lot of us, uh, we're not experiencing change. We're not experiencing transformation because we feel frozen. We feel terror. We feel fear. We feel uncertainty. And, and these are the things that if we don't learn how to navigate, ultimately we'll keep our lives uh, in the same place. Um, we had you know, a long conversation with our team this morning about you know, when they're having conversations with people. And there's just a few things that we want to recognize before I kind of like jump into the meat and potatoes here. And that is, is that, you know, first things first is if, if we as people personally are unable to take responsibility for what's happening in our lives, then chances are our lives are not going to change. Uh, after 20 years of being in personal development work, I think 18 years now, coaching people, probably, you know, thousands, tens of thousands of people that I've gotten to speak to over the years and give guidance to, uh, fundamentally, 
uh, people who are living their life in the context of someday, one day, right? Like one day things will change, one day I'll get to that. Uh, oftentimes go through decades with that context, right? They're like waiting for this perfect moment and this the right thing to happen and to retire or to just make just enough money to take that trip or take that risk or whatever it might be. And that's that's the context of living in a someday, one day type of conversation. And we used to have a, a mentor that we absolutely love, this guy named Paul. And he would say that uh, every day I wake up and it's a Monday and Tuesday, it's a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday or Sunday. He goes, and I'm clear that if I ever wake up on a Sunday, a whole lot of great shit is going to happen all over the world. But I've never woken up on a Sunday. Um, and that was kind of just like a little bit of a call to action for some of you guys who may be living in this context. A lot of us do think me included, uh, prior to doing work, that uh, when I think about things and, and sit and gather information, like I'm taking action about that thing. And the reality is only taking action is taking action. If you're in a, if you're one of the, you know, if you're a person who likes to gather a lot of information before you choose to do something and you're trying to get it perfect all the time, it's like, that. that's just not how life works. It's not a, you're never gonna get it exactly right. And there's never this perfect moment coming um, and so I really want to urge you that if you are in a place in your life right now where you know you want to make a change, then an intervention has to happen. Some type of action has to be taken. It doesn't have to be with us. And you should always take action somewhere that it feels good for you, whether it's a program, a mentor, something, somebody that can help you uh, gain a new perspective, that can give you uh, a new modality, some practices that you can do, something that's going to shift the way that you, you think and feel about things or and a lot of times we're resistant to that because we are un, unable to identify that we're truly afraid that we're actually experiencing for many people uh terror in their system and then we have all these programs and managers and protectors that come so that we don't actually have to fully feel our experience and honestly you know again my contention after 20 years of doing this work it's our inability to feel that terror and that fear that actually has it run our lives. We're, we're not liberated from that experience. We think, oh, this is too uncomfortable and the mind steps in. That's what I'm going to kind of talk about here because this is why people are stuck. Uh, if you go to our, our satoriprime.com website, you'll see a, kind of a line there that came out of me a few years ago. And it's like, you know, our philosophy here at Satori Prime and, and inside the Old Souls and Seeker group is that stop trying to make yourself feel better. <laughs> Let me finish it. Stop trying to make yourself feel better and instead simply get better at feeling. Okay, we live in a very mental society, in a society that there's not a lot of uh, energetic uh, attunement, there's not a lot of training around awareness, and so we don't uh, navigate our emotions well, basically. We don't navigate the sensations in our body well. That's probably a more accurate way of saying it. And so, and simply put, we don't, haven't had training. Your parents didn't have training for this. They couldn't have taught it to you. There's not a minute in school that anybody trains you on how your awareness works or your mind works or uh, energetics in the body works. And so this stuff is mostly kept from people. And because we all get so busy with our lives, there's never it seems a time where people start mastering the most important thing that they can master, which is really mastering the self. Because if you want to make headway in your business, if you want to make headway in your career, if you want to make headway in your relationships, you want to make headway in your health, the foundational thing behind all of those things is you. So you can read all the great books and get all the information and figure out what other all the systems that people do. But again, I, I've been an entrepreneur now for 11 years. I've been in the world of business, um, let's see, about 16. And I have been to so many seminars and so many marketing things and business things. And I've seen so many people have all these brilliant ideas that they're applying to their business. And no matter how many times... I've tried to take that person's idea and apply it to what I'm doing. It's never, not even once, worked out for me. And the reason for that is because mastery is not just an idea. It's not a blueprint necessarily, although they help, right? Like having maps and blueprints, very, very useful. But as a, someone who's in the process of mastering myself over the last 20 years, and again, for the, you guys listening, you can uh, chime in on this too, uh, as pe as there's a bunch of you guys here who are in our work as well and you can chime in on this it's like mastery is really the nuance it's these little micro things that you become aware of in the greater scheme like there's like the meta idea like the big idea right the concept that everyone can see and understand 
but, or I say and, underneath that is all this little nuanced stuff that only a professional or a master has come to realize that make all the difference in the world, right? And any athlete, anybody who's in science or mathematics or anybody who's a chess player or, you know, mastered something, they're going to tell you, yeah, you know, I could teach the moves to anybody, but there's something, there's a nuance that I've come to understand deeply within myself. And that's why my, the quality of my work or the quality of my expression is that much better. Okay. So hopefully that kind of gives you the lay of the land of what we want to talk about here. And so, yeah, you know, we're, as humans, there is this natural tendency for procrastination and stuckness. How many of you guys, you know, by just saying I in the chat box, you know that somewhere in your life, there's probably something you're procrastinating about. You really want to do that thing, but you keep telling yourself, I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get to that, but you don't. How many of you guys can um, kind of feel into that experience and know that's something that you're dealing with? Yeah, and Veronique is saying, yeah, she's been in the work for eight months in our level three program. She's still learning every day, and it's so amazing. And it's true, because when you start getting into the world of consciousness and energetics, here's the reality. It's infinite. It's not a finite thing. Consciousness is an infinite phenomena. So there's always something there that you can learn, and it's novel. And that's what actually keeps life very uh, interesting. Most of us don't have a novel life experience anymore. We wake up on a Monday, we know how our Monday is going to go. Wake up on a Tuesday, you know how your Tuesday is going to go. Humans... Our, our discoverers were curious by nature and so what happens to a human being when they don't have an opportunity to discover or be curious anymore and i would say roughly that's a, a major differentiation between a child who looks very happy and is curious and having novel experiences and is an open book versus an adult who's supposed to know everything right most adults think they know everything when it's like no you know what you know based on your experiences and it's distorted based on the conditioning that you had. And I get that that's your real and as lived experience, but that is not the only way to look at that thing. It's not the only way to do that thing. It's not the only way to think about that thing. It makes us feel safe to think that we know. Okay. Uh, a, a good student approaches work by, by understanding that they know very little. The wiser I've gotten in my, in my tenure of doing this work, the more I realize I don't know how much bigger it really all is complex and multidimensional way beyond anything I ever anticipated but that's what's exciting i wake up every morning and i'm like we'll see we'll see what today brings right so i want to talk about the dynamics of what's happening within our mind and even more importantly within our body when this feeling of stuckness comes okay and then you know of course when we're trying to take on new ventures it's going to be natural when we're looking at anything whether it's this program starting a business getting into a relationship that fears are going to arise right when you commit to doing something in your life and you had never done that thing before, and your mind is trying to look at it and project what this experience is going to be like, but there's it can't project because it's never done that before, the natural tendency for the body in that moment is to start experiencing fear in the face of uncertainty. And so you got to know, the first thing you got to recognize, and again, hopefully you guys are, are following this, like how many of you guys know that when you want to do something new, or you sign up to do something new, that there's an experience of fear, maybe even terror behind that. And maybe those that fear and that terror has you actually pull back and say, you know what, I'm going to say, I'm going to stay safe. I'm going to stay in my known world and I'm going to keep doing this thing. And what you want to recognize for a lot of people when they stay in that known world, they're not having an experience of pleasure. They're not actually enjoying their life. However, the mind really only cares about your survival and safety. And so if it, if it recognizes that you're going to do something new that may make you feel uncomfortable, it is going to try to sway you towards doing something that's already known. Like sitting on the couch is a very safe place to be. Watching TV, you know, eating snacks, very safe place to be. Is that going to lead to a life that you're going to be, you know, ultimately proud of at the end of your days and feel like you really got as much juice out of life as you can? Probably not, but your brain... It's thinking, well, I'm safe, we're good. And so the brain has this tendency and we have this tendency to repeat what we've done in the past before that is predictable for the very virtue that it keeps us safe, right? Yeah, somebody was just saying, uh, Elizabeth saying, I've done a million different things, constantly fail, constantly trying new stuff, still stuck. Beautiful, okay, so you know, in a case like that, certainly there'll just be 
maybe some kind of misalignment. So again, let, let's talk about this. Let's talk about what's going on. Because what most people are trying to do, what most people try to do really, is they, they want a quick fix, right? We live in a world where we've gone, gotten accustomed to apps and people delivering stuff to your door in a few days. And so we're, we live in a world that, that creates a lot of dopamine in our system. If you guys know what that means, like you're constantly getting dopamine fixes. Like there's a new box coming to your door every day. How many of you guys remember like when you were a kid and you would order something, like you'd mail order something and they would say, we'll be there in six to eight weeks. And then you'd forget that you ordered that thing. And then it would like eventually show up and you're like, oh, whatever. It, you know, the excitement was gone already. The dopamine was like when you ordered it. Now it's like Amazon boxes at your front step every single day, constant dopamine, you know, entertainment at your fingertips, constant dopamine, social media constant dopamine you know there's there's like we're we're becoming like our our own pharmacist but in the way this dopamine is creating these these micro addictions to all these things and having us unfocused from the thing that really matters which is our own experience and our own presence we're constantly being pulled into other experiences and that seems like that's what should be going on but if you are tracking what's happening in the world today where we, where we have um you know 75% of Americans are on at least one pharmaceutical. Suicide rates through the roof. Depression at an all-time high. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but it seems to me like whatever it is that we're doing right now is not nourishing our souls, is not creating a healthy environment for people. And a lot of this uh, stems from the way that we um, have culturally, not I don't know by anybody's single decision, but culturally have agreed upon how we raise children. And we can get into that. But ultimately, I want to talk to you, the adult who's here now. And like, how do we establish a new way of being from where we are in our lives? Right? Because like there, there has been a certain conditioning in your life. When I say the word reprogramming, people get really upset. They're like, what do you mean you're going to reprogram my mind? Well, it's like everything around you is programming you right now all the time. Media, uh, TV, religion, uh, school that you went to, the culture that you grew up in, the town that you were in, your parents clearly, right? Like, so if, you, if reprogramming is too strong of a word for you, think of like there, there was a condition. You were put into an environment that conditioned you a certain way. And, and whatever you felt and experienced, that conditioning didn't happen one time. You may remember a traumatic moment in your life, but I promise you, I promise you that whatever that moment was, there was a repetition. Maybe that one was extreme and that's why you, you, you really remember it. Like I certainly remember traumatic moments in my life. Those were moments of immense tension or fear or sadness or something like that. After that though, if you kind of track this, once you have a traumatic moment, the experience is, I never want to experience this again. How many of you guys know what I mean? Uh, just say I in the chat box. I never want to experience this sensation again, this feeling of heartbreak, this sadness, this grief, this pain. Never want to experience this again, okay? And, and that would make sense. And so in that moment, what the brain does, what the mind does, is it creates a way to protect you. Some kind of a defense that you have in your life. Right? And then what happens is that these, this part of you, okay, like what trauma really is inside the system, if we're going to say energetically, a metaphor for that is there was a, a part of you that gets stuck in time. It like almost lives in the past. And that past is what people reenact and loop inside of. And this is the challenge. This is why people get stuck is energetically what's happening is energy, hit, energy hits the system and stimulates the body. And then it, it gets stuck at a certain area and there is discomfort there. And this is that part of you that gets stuck in time. Then you have the mind that comes in to defend and protect this part and attempts to create safety with whatever worked with in that specific moment. Now, this part protector is beautiful and is working, and I know it's working because you're listening to me talk here right now, and it means that you've survived up until this moment. And so we really always want to begin where most people get stuck is they try to go against their mindset. They're like, oh, I think this way, I should think that way. But what they really feel the moment they think that inside is shame, blame, and guilt. And I don't know about you, but when I'm shaming myself or guilting myself or blaming myself or getting angry at the self, there's not a lot of space for something new to happen. In fact, I just stay exactly where I am. And a lot of the conditioning we got from, from mom and dad from society was, here's how you change somebody, is you tell them they were bad, you tell them that they were wrong, and in the face of that, they are going to show up differently, but they don't. All they really feel is the shame and blame and guilt, right? And so for us to change something within ourselves, we need to be able to take responsibility. 
And so we want to recognize that taking responsibility does not mean to shame and blame and guilt yourself. Simply put, if you break down the word responsibility, it's an ability to respond. That's all that means. Okay. If something is happening in your life and you don't respond to it, is it going to change? Is anything in your life, is anything going to change? No one is coming. There's no Messiah coming to your door. The lottery is not going to be delivered to you. You're not going to find the perfect person who's going to take these problems away. You're not going to find the perfect partner who's suddenly going to make you feel like you're worthy of love. If your whole life you've spent feeling not worthy of love, then when you have a partner, guess what? They're going to make you feel not that they're not doing it, but what you're going to reenact in and reloop in is a partner that doesn't show up for you the way that you think that they should. And so you feel unworthy of love. This is what we do. We magnetize we magnetize our inner beliefs into our lives. We magnetize people into our lives that are going to reenact and reloop with us our inner beliefs. Yet we often put a lot of responsibility on our circumstances, our environment, and other people to attempt to mirror back to ourselves that we are some other way than our beliefs, right? It's like we want, oh, you tell me that I'm worthy, then I'll be worthy. Mom and dad have to show up and tell me that I'm good for me to believe that I'm good. You may never get that from mom and dad. I'm sorry to tell you. There are other ways to repair it, though, with other people where you don't need to get that from mom and dad. And so what we want to recognize in these moments of trauma, it's not that you're broken and it's not that anything's wrong. Every human I've ever met is traumatized. Every human I've ever met and worked with is dealing with problems. Some of them that are way bigger than the ones that you have, maybe, right? Some people are really dealing with some shit out there. So I don't want to, I don't want to take that away. And what you got to get is that there's a way that a human is conditioned. Some of us, we, some of this we come in with, whether, you know, I don't know what your beliefs are about past lives or whatever. The soul is a, is an infinite energy, right? If you just want to think of it as energy of consciousness, that's never destroyed or created, believe what you want about that. But like my experience has been that people come in with stuff. Okay. The other part is, is just the conditioning that happens to you. And so there is a process, certainly in our formative years, when our system is wide open and very energetically attuned. And what I mean by energetically attuned is a child doesn't have language. You can't explain anything to a baby. All it's getting is energetic signaling. And so the signaling, the energy that mom and dad are outputting, are going to shape the perceptions of that child. And the child is going to look at its environment and think it's either a really scary or a safe environment, depending on how mom and dad are interacting energetically with the child and their environment. And the parent's real job is to teach a child how to downregulate their nervous system when it's hit with a lot of energy and there's an upcharge. There's a surge of energy in the system that can create discomfort. That's when the child's crying, right? Ah, it's scared. There's too much energy in the system. And what the child needs when it's being hugged and loved and all those things is it's essentially energetically mirroring the parent's nervous system in that moment. And that's what it's learning from. It's what every mammal on planet Earth does, by the way. We're not, we're not unique to this, okay? And so there's a signaling that happens. Now, if the signaling to the child is fear in that moment, then guess what? There's trauma, the part gets stuck, and the energy doesn't fully metabolize out of the system. And then in, later on, when that stimulus comes in again, that process repeats. It gets stuck in the system. Discomfort comes. Child gets upset. And so what happens if that doesn't get repaired? And what repair simply means is not that you're broken. All it means is that the system missed a piece of information that it was looking for in that moment in order to feel safe and healthy and an ex, an experience of well-being. Okay. And I want to just let you know if you're a parent and you're like, fuck, I'm doing this with my kids. I get you, right? That we all have that, those moments with our children. We're like, damn, I wish I could take that back. However, research shows that for someone to have a healthy attachment system, the parent has to get it right only 30% of the time. I mean, seven out of 10 times, you can totally blow it. Three out of 10, if you can repair with the child, the child's going to be way healthier for it. You're going to have a child that's, that eventually will be very independent, uh, will feel safe inside their body, which is really what uh, mine and Elon's work is about, is creating a, a fun, a fundamental experience of safety inside of the system and then an experience of well-being okay and i want to offer that most people have yet to experience safety or well-being in their lives this is an edgy thing to say to people but i'm, I'm going to tell you now because it's how would you know until you've until you experience well-being and safety you wouldn't know that you've never felt that way before so i just want you guys to check in really quick with yourself is since you've arrived on this planet since you've been a human being 
could you actually articulate that what you feel in your nervous system is safe when you go out into the world when you you know do your job when you're with your spouse whatever it might be like certainly there might be moments of safety but is are you fundamentally feeling safe inside your system and this again it's one of these funny things to initially listen to and think like i feel safe well i can tell you again from working with so many people that the underlying thing is our nervous system doesn't actually feel safe it's not mental it's not what you tell yourself. It's not like, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine, everything's fine, I'm good, I'm good, right? Like when your friends ask you, are you okay? And you're like, yeah, I'm fine. But like if you actually checked underneath that, they're like, well, really, how are you? And then it's just like, I don't know, I'm really scared right now, nothing's working out. Like there's a feeling of not feeling safe. And so we want to consider that doing these repairs is not a weekend retreat, okay? Like there's if Elon and I could... Could, could have a magic pill that we can give you that would that would just transform your life. I swear to God, we would we would manufacture it, we would, we would sell it, and I'm sure we would sell a lot of it, okay? The conditioning that you got from that moment when that schism happened, you didn't get the information you were looking for. By its nature, the system then repeats that process over and over again, not to harm the child more or the adult more, but in fact to bring it back towards awareness so that it can be healed and repaired. What we're missing, what most of us are missing, are the practices and awareness that allows for that repair to happen naturally because our system does repair itself naturally when given the right environment. Okay, and that part, that second part, the given the right environment is very important. For example, if you had a cut on your, you know, your hand or whatever, like it's going to get repaired, right? It's like your, your system is just going to take care of that. There's an intelligence in your system, your body that will heal that cut without you having to think about it. However, if we start putting like dirt and grease and grime into that cut, we're going to have an infection and the system will not be able to repair itself without intervention. And so that's what I mean by it still needs an appropriate environment in order to heal itself. If it's dirty, not going to heal. And so our consciousness, our energy, our mindset is the same way. If we keep living in the environment that we're in, and I don't mean the people around you, I literally mean the way that you view life. Right, and it's, I'll talk about this as a second piece where the repair is going to happen. It's that we're consciously and how we hold ourselves internally is an environment that doesn't allow for that repair to happen. And so, what our work is about is helping people a recognize, like, have awareness around these these aspects of how the mind and energy and the body move and work, and you know why we get into uh, why we get really stuck. And then the second part is what are the practices that enable for this environment, for us to live in an environment that allows for our body, our energy system, our nervous system, and our mindset to repair itself automatically because that's innate in every one of you. So I want to let you guys know that the power to heal yourself is inside of you. It's not in a pill. There are appropriate times where we need Western medicine without a doubt, right? But like that is really putting a Band-Aid on something. Most, most pills are not about connecting your body to your mind. It's about disconnecting the mind from the body so the mind is not aware that there's some repair that needs to happen down here. And this is why we have so many damn side effects when you take a chemical drug. It, there's a chemical reaction. You're not aware of it, but it is happening. And so the repair is not happening in the system. Okay, and that's why like so many people don't do well with antidepressants. Although again, there are, there are times where those are appropriate, right? And so that's what we wanna really learn, okay? So just to kind of map this for you guys, and I, I, we will do a, a slight demo here towards the the ender parts so end part of this uh, training. So stick with me for another like 10, 15 minutes. Uh, I will give you a demo because I want you to get a sense of the power that lives inside of your own body. And this is not woo woo bullshit. You are going to recognize something today that you have never recognized about your own awareness. Okay. And again, not for any other reason, not because you're incapable, because it's not taught period. Okay. So here's the map. Most people are working on their mind. They have a bad thought. And then they're taught, don't have that bad thought, have a good thought. How many of you guys have tried that? Positive thinking. How's that going? Are you positive now? Is everything really good in your life? Is it all working out? Let me know in the chat box. How's that going? I don't know about you. That's never worked for me. It That is like sheer will, power, and brute force. It's like when you are like have the worst eating habit in the world. And you're like, oh, okay, tomorrow I'm going to start my diet. And then you're like, yeah, it works for like 15 minutes until you walk by the fridge and you see the, you know, something delicious. And then you're like, all right, I'll start tomorrow. <laughs> you know, like it doesn't work. Your conditioning says otherwise. And then what ends up happening is as you try to go against that conditioning, 
you actually start shaming and guilting yourself, which makes your system feel terrible, unsafe, and unwell. And when you feel that stress inside of your system, how do you deal with that? You deal with that with whatever addictions you have. So if you eat when you feel stressed out, you go right back to eating. And now you are literally punishing yourself into a stressful situation that literally causes you to eat more. And you can apply the same metaphor to in relationships, your, your health, your business. It's the same thing no matter what it is, right? But again, we see a lot of this in society. People avoiding what they're feeling inside their body by eating because food is a dopamine hit. Makes your brain go in a different direction. I feel bad. Oh, I ate something. Now I feel okay. Sort of okay. Until I feel bad again, which then makes me eat again. And it's like, you know, these vicious cycles. So if, the, if, so if reconditioning the mind worked by simply just, you know, saying something different to the mind over and over again, we'd all be enlightened by now. We'd all be masters. Uh, we just have to sit here going, um, I'm healthy, 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 right? And like, and then you would be. It doesn't work that way. Because what we want to recognize is that the pain body and the, there's a mind-body connection. Every, every single thing in your life has an energetic component, a physical component, a mental component, spiritual component, and you cannot separate these things. Okay? And the other part is, is if you work on one, it, it helps the others along. But we want to be able to focus on, on doing all of them. Because all of us are physical and mental and energetic and spiritual. Okay? So, well, here's the map. When, when we're in an experience, whatever it is, right? You're at work, you're with a spouse, you know, map whatever experience you have that's difficult for you. In that moment, if you recognize, most people just deal with their thoughts, okay? We're a very mental society, especially in the Western world. This is a society built by the mind, not by the heart. But when we are in a, any environment, there is energetic signaling going on. When your boss is upset at you, yeah, there are the words that he says or she says that may not make you feel good. But before that, there's also energy hitting your body. And that's what really doesn't feel good. It's not the, the mindset is just a, uh, uh, the, the response that, that the mind has after you feel this thing inside your body. How many of you guys know what I mean? You feel fear, you feel shame, you feel guilt, you feel bad, whatever it might be, or you feel angry you feel defensive, you know, like whatever it might be. And so there's this experience of energy in the body and it's usually like a, a discomfort, like a tightening or a pinching or, you know, something. And like we could just call it a, an uncomfortable sensation in the body. And the mind's job is to try to create safety, right? So it's looking down like this, uh, you know, like a foreman in a warehouse that's like walking on top and looking down and going, uh oh, we got a problem down there. And then what it does is it reacts in the most efficient way that it knows how. And what it, where it reacts from is whatever happened way, 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 way in the past when you were like two or three years old and you had some trauma and it uses that same program right now in this moment to try to stop or defend or create safety from what's happening. How many of you guys are tracking this? Okay. So, so the mind is going to keep doing that. It's not going to stop. And if you just deal with your thoughts, try to outdo those thoughts because those thoughts come. I don't know where if you guys can track them, but I don't know where the hell that's coming from. They just appear. I can't really track back the source of a thought. Can you like, where is that thought coming from? It just, it appears like an aberration. It appears like clouds do in the sky. It's not there. And then it is there. Now I'm not that thought. Here's a little breakthrough for everyone. Hopefully you're not the thought. You are the one listening to the thought. You are actually the observer, the listener that is separate from thought. And if you begin to observe thoughts as not you, just the thought that's appearing, this is called what we call subtle mind awareness. And if you just practice that, your life will begin to transform dramatically, by the way. Recognizing that the thoughts are not your own. And you also got to recognize this thing is a chess master. It knows you better than you know yourself. And it responds faster than you can respond. You can, we can certainly call it the subconscious, as Elizabeth said. But I want to, I want to, there's a lot of that languaging when it comes to like, you know, uh, hypnosis and stuff like that. And certainly it's, it's below our consciousness. So we can certainly call it subconscious, but just call it just a system, right? There, it's just really, it's all consciousness. Humans try to create distinctions, but this is how the mechanism works. So this part is really what's responding first. Okay. Ultimately your body is the number one signal signal caller that you have and again i want to re reiterate that when you were born you didn't have language you weren't having 
like a narrative thought. You weren't thinking in linear ways or processes. You weren't analyzing yourself. Like none of that was there. What was the first thing that was there? Is an energetic signaling that you were receiving from your environment and your caregivers. And so that is the most fundamental thing that a mammal and a human being as a mammal has in language that is innate and deep to us that we learn from and understand and is giving us feedback of our environment. Yes or no? Is that true? Yes or no? Now, as an adult living in a Western world, certainly we have learned to not listen to that. We constantly try to overpower this feeling that we have in our body. True or not true? Using willpower, shame and guilt and uh, habituation over and over again to like, right? So whatever happened when you were little, I want you to get like, how many of you guys are dealing with something in your life right now? It's like something you really want to transform. Say I in the chat box. And you may have been working on this for a long time. Like maybe right. Like how long have you been dealing with this thing? Five years, 10 years, your whole life. You know, one of the prominent questions that we ask people when they, when they tell us, here's what I'm dealing with my life. We're like, well, how does that feel? And they go, such and such, it hurts here, I'm sad about this, great. And the next question is, is is that new? Is this the first time you're feeling that thing? And inevitably the person says, of course not. I've been dealing with this most of my life. Exactly, my whole life, whoever just said that, Sarah said, right? I've been dealing with this my whole life. Elizabeth said, 30 years. Bobby says, lifetime. Yeah, you've been dealing with it your whole life. This has been going on since before you had thought. This has been going on since before you could analyze yourself. This was before you had any sort of linear thinking. Like that doesn't start until you're seven or eight years old. There is seven, eight years of life. And for anybody who has a parent, you know that a lot of life happens in the first seven to eight years. There's a lot of growth happening. And that whole time, you couldn't process yourself. You couldn't analyze anything. That, that comes right after that. Seven, eight, nine years old is where kids start kind of having more of a linear way. They can see progressive type of thinking. Before that, it's all energy. It's all about how it feels. Some things feels good, some things don't feel good, and the mind is building programs to defend what doesn't feel good and become addicted to what does feel good. And this is where we're all stuck. So again, I want to point out that the, the initial signaling and your number one thing that gives you feedback about your environment is your body. The mind is interpreting what the body is feeling, and it's doing a very poor job of it because it can be manipulated. Your parents could have, you know, you could have hit your brother or sister and they're crying and then you're told that you're bad and then you start getting upset and they go, don't be upset. And then you go, oh, I can't get upset when I hit somebody or I can't be upset in this situation and it confuses you. And then the mind does weird shit because in moments where you're supposed to feel angry, which is appropriate sometimes, you smash it down back in there and all you feel is shame and guilt and sadness. And then you go, what the hell just happened there? Like, I wanted to be able to find my voice and find my center and be grounded and say, this is not okay. And you can't do that in your life because the conditioning won't let you. And now you don't know how to set boundaries with people in your life and everyone feels like you're walking all over you or taking advantage of you, right? Some of you guys are probably having that experience. That's how these things can happen. And so if we just keep working on our minds and trying to recondition it, my experience limited opportunity there does it can it work a little bit certainly better than not doing that like right like having a curiosity and how you can shift your mindset absolutely we still teach mindset right but here's here's how you change your mind if you guys are for those of you guys who are curious how do i actually change my mind well the first thing is is you you got to start with new distinctions you can't operate from where you're operating from where you are right now is the understanding that you have about the way the world works, about how you work and how you interact with your environment. That's what you have. That's your program. The results that you have in your life right now are the results of that programming flat out. The reality you're experiencing though has more to do with the vibration that you're emitting from your body and the type of experiences that that magnetizes and attracts to you. Okay. And so the first thing we got to do is we got to understand how the mind works. The second thing we got to do is give the mind new distinctions so that it can start viewing different experiences in a new way. This creates a very strong foundation for being able to change our thinking. Okay. This way or that way though, even if you do this, you got, you need repetition because what created trauma in your life was also repetition. What you do automatically, those responses that you have when your mind gets hijacked and you say those things that you didn't mean to say, yeah, we all do that by the way. 
or you take that action that you didn't mean to take and it hurts you and it hurts somebody else and that doesn't feel good, you can't stop that. That was conditioned. You've done that thousands of times in your life before. You felt that so many times. Yeah, so we're going to talk about changing vibrations here. You know, um, as uh, Elizabeth said. Yeah, so we're going to talk about what, what changes the vibration. Because ultimately, the mind is doing its job. You don't have a bad mind. You don't have a broken mind. It's trying to protect you. You want to start with understanding and learning and starting to honor the fact that your mind is doing a really good job, actually. You may not like the outcomes that it's producing, but it's doing its job. You're surviving. You're still here. So, like, take a moment and be like, thank you, mind. <laughs> thank you for allowing me to live this life up until now. It doesn't care about your circumstances. It doesn't need to pro approve of them. It does not give a shit how you feel about those circumstances. It is doing its job. And you want to begin by honoring, understanding that it is doing its job very well. What you want to shift is the relationship between that the mind has to how it responds to your body. Okay, you guys heard, I said before, trauma gets its energy, stimulus hits your body. Boop, something gets stuck, the heart gets clenched, the mind has to respond. So how do we stop the mind from overreacting? Well, if we learn how to put ourselves into an environment that allows for the energy that's stuck to continue to move, we call this metabolizing energy. Science would call this down-regulating your nervous system or going into a rest or digest state. When we're in that state, our body does what it's designed to do, which is it metabolizes energy. And if you think of yourself this way, that's really what a human body is. It's a, it's a system that puts energy in and metabolizes it, right? It's the same thing we do when we eat food. It's the same thing when we go outside and we get sun in our body, we get vitamin D, we're getting energy into our body. Even when we eat food, by the way, all that is is sunlight energy that's being photosynthesized. Even if you eat animals, they're eating those plants. Those plants are empowering that, 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 that body and that body is getting energy, light into it. And then we're eating, we're essentially all eating light. That's all, that's all energy is, okay? light vibrations and frequencies and so your body needs to metabolize that what happens when food gets stuck in our intestinal tract or we're backed up and we have you know won't say it here but you can't you can't go number one or number two you're going to be in pain and your mind's not going to go like oh that pain is fun down there it's gonna be like what the fuck is going on we need to handle this right it's going to start, gonna start reacting to that pain and that discomfort in the body it's the same thing with what people call emotions Emotions, energy in motion. So an emotion that we like is an energy that's moving. And an emotion that we don't like is an energy that's stagnant. It's an energy that's not moving. That's the only difference here is motion or not motion. When things are not in motion and they're stuck in our system, our mind goes crazy. So what we want to learn how to do and the practices that allow for that in the environment to do that is to actually enable for this energy to move again. And what you guys are burdened by for your entire life is the energy that keeps getting stagnant in your system. Now, this is, again, not a one and done process. It has layers. Like, think about how many things your mind has connected to one point of trauma, like this experience that you've had thousands of times. It's not like, oh, just this one thing. It's like a lot of things can trigger that. A person cutting you off on the road, your spouse saying the wrong thing, a project not working out, you know, you being overweight or, you know, not where you think you need to be. Like, all of that can trigger that, that central point of trauma in your system, and then the mind has to react. The mind has to react. Yeah, we're all onions, baby. Whoever said that, right on. Yeah, Elizabeth, you're an onion. We're all an onion. You should be excited about this. What I'm what I'm sharing with with you right now, 99.99% of society has never heard before. And so, when we metabolize this energy, ah, spaciousness returns, and the mind can relax and go back to a calm state. It doesn't need to defend. It doesn't need to protect anymore. So it relaxes. And the mind, what you got to know about the mind is the mind cares greatly about efficiency and how it uses energy. It tries to use as little consumption as possible. This is the number one caloric organ in your body. It uses more energy than any other organ in your body. And so it tries to use it efficiently. Even science today will tell you that 95% of the thoughts inside your head are just looping. The reality that you're seeing in front of you, you're seeing about to be generous, 1% of what's really going on in front of your experience. The other 99% is completely omitted. It's too overwhelming. There's too much data. And yet we all live like we know exactly what's going on. 
every thought, every person, every time they say something, what's their intention behind it? Why they said that to me? I know exactly what's going on. It's, it's like you are so far from understanding what is true and real, even your own true nature. It's kind of laughable that we argue about anything at all because we're all so far away. We're all so far from understanding what's really going on in our reality. And this is not spirituality talking. It's not guy talking. This is science, okay? This is all proven stuff. So the work that we do here, guys, is about recognizing the subtle energy that exists in the body. You guys heard me make that distinction about becoming the listener of your thoughts. In the same way that we can listen to thoughts, we can start through higher awareness practices, meaning like actually coming out of your conditioned mind. Our contention is you can't do healing work or heal yourself from the mechanism that's creating the problem. If you're living in a certain type of conditioning, how are you going to be inside that conditioning and fix that or change it? It's not going to happen. Einstein has that uh, quote that I'm going to butcher right now, but it's like, we cannot solve problems with the same minds that created them, with the level of mind that created them. That is true for you too. You cannot solve the problems in your life from the level of mind that's creating it. You got to come into a higher state of consciousness. And, and ironically, it's actually not hard to go into a higher state of consciousness. We teach it at all our workshops. It's very easy. And the reason it's easy, and we're going to do that now, by the way, I'm going to show you how to do that, is because it's innate to you. This is natural. That power literally is inside of you. The only difference is no one's ever pointed it out to you. They hadn't pointed out to you because they didn't learn it themselves. Your mom and dad didn't have the ability to point to it. They didn't have the attunement that you wanted as a child because they didn't get that attunement. They didn't have a template for it, and so they couldn't give it to you. Most people are very upset at their mom and dad for the way that they were raised, rightfully so, because biologically we're built for support. And when we don't get support the way that we think that we required it, we get fucking upset. Where Where is the support? And then, of course, that translates to whatever you thought about mom and dad and, you know, that was everything to you. We automatically template that onto God and source and now there's no support out there. There's no support in these systems. There's no support at work. And we run around this world being too afraid to even ask for support or thinking that we have needs, which every human being and child on this planet does. And that's what we get to change. That's where, that's where humanity gets to evolve into. We've been very externally focused, trying to change our circumstances, but we don't feel any different. And that's why this material world, and no matter how much shit you buy or acquire, is not going to ultimately help you feel better on the inside because you're looking in the wrong direction can't fix what's on the inside by looking out there. So let's do a little experiment here for those of you guys who are, who are newer to the community and never done this before, because I want you to experience your own awareness. And I want you to get that if you become a subtle witness of this energy and motion in your body, you can elicit an intelligent divine response in your body that will actually move and heal your body automatically. And then when that happens, this efficient energy system that's up here, this mind, is going to stop being so reactive. Now, if the mind over time doesn't need to keep reacting to the same thing it's reacted to over and over again, because it's an efficient machine, it will break the neurology that it uses to try to defend. Okay, you guys have probably all heard the line by now. This is very well known, right? The, the uh, basically the neurology that fires together, wires together. Right, but it needs to keep doing that. You need to keep reasserting your reality over and over again to keep your psychology the same way. And so if the brain suddenly finds that it doesn't need to fire that off anymore, it will break that bond and create neurogenesis. It will create new neuronal pathways. And this is what we want to do. We want to create new neuronal pathways, but not by reconditioning the mind. That will happen on its own as a byproduct of doing this practice. And P.S., the meditation I mentioned in the beginning of this training, and again, you can get it by typing in meditation in the chat box, trains you how to do this. <laughs> we are literally giving it away. Because we want to. We want you guys to have access to these tools. However, if you want to, like, why would then would you join one of our programs or do something like that? Because you want to master it. You want to live your life from this place. Not just, oh, okay, I get how to do this. It's like, oh, shit. I want to learn what people have been doing this a very, very long time. What are the nuances, right? Because ultimately, how do, we, how do we expedite training? How do we get people to learn faster is a, a master comes and points. is like, did you notice that? Because it took me 10 years to recognize that. But in this moment, as you're in that process, do you recognize that? Can you notice that in your system? You go, yeah, that's it. That little glimpse, that little glimpse right there is everything you need. 
It's not a big gulp thing. It's not a big insight. Oh my God, my life is so different. I'm going to Jesus and having these big moments, right? Like, that's cool if you want to do that, but you're going to be chasing big dopamine experiences that don't really change your life. What really changes your life is micro noticing. Like, it's these micro things. Like, how many of you guys know it's like, yeah, it's like you go on vacation with your hubby, your loved one, and it's like amazing, but it's like you want presents. We really require so fucking little. We, we, just, want, we just want connection. Authentic, true connection. We want to feel like we matter in this world, but you got to give that to yourself. You got to find compassion within. You want to see the world transform? No one's going to show you fucking compassion. And you're not going to see it even if they're giving to you because you won't feel worthy of it on the inside. We transform because we find compassion and love for these parts within our system. Nothing gets left behind. You are not going to figure out ways to get rid of these parts of you. They come with you wherever you go, whether you like it or not. So you might as well learn how to have compassion for them. And then you'll see instead of being on an island by themselves upset, they will reintegrate into the system and feel the love that you have for them. And then guess what? When you have compassion for that part and then you see somebody else acting that way in society, you automatically have compassion for them. Where people get upset about what they see in society is the parts that they have disowned within themselves. If you've disowned, like you can't get acknowledged without feeling shitty inside your system, then when you see someone out there getting acknowledged, you go, that's evil. That's bullshit. Why are they getting acknowledged? Acknowledgement is shitty. No one should get acknowledged that way. It's inauthentic. And it's just right here. It's just your repair. And this is how we get peace. This is how we transform the planet. It's not a change the laws, make everyone think and feel and act the same way. We've tried that for thousands of years. It doesn't work. It is on the individual's job. It's the individual's spiritual work to bring that into their lives. And then all of society is going to change. I don't care what laws you change. You can't change the hearts and the minds of the people by changing a law. So check this out. Here's your little demo. You ready? <clears throat> so you're going to put up your hand, right hand, just to be clear. i take a little sip of water here. You're going to put up your right hand. Good on you guys for asking for the meditations. And I and I and before we do this, I, I really assert don't take this meditation lightly. Don't take it too seriously either, but start doing it every day. Give yourself 21 days. You tell me that you don't start seeing major changes in your life. I, I nearly guarantee anybody who's willing to sit 20 to 30 minutes a day and do that meditation, you prioritize your well-being and safety. You're gonna see every area of your life improve. Again, whether you do a program with us or not, the reason to do a program. The reason to go book your call at callsatory.com or, you know, reach out to our team is because you want to master this. You want to commit your life to changing the foundation from which you live. We want committed people. If you're going to book a call, like come with the intention of figuring out whether this is appropriate for you or not to do. We can help you with anything. It doesn't matter what area of life that's going on right now. We can help. I guarantee it. Okay. So like feel good that you don't have to do our programs, but come on these calls with that in mind. Like I'm here to get informed so I can make a choice about whether or not I want to do these programs. And it's totally okay if the answer is no, we're going to honor your experience anyway. And our programs are fucking great. Just going to tell you. Okay. So put up your hand and close your eyes like this. Like I have to tell you how to close your eyes, just close your eyes. <laughs> and instead of looking at your hand, put your awareness on your hand, just putting awareness on your hand, eyes closed, just putting awareness on your hand. And you're going to start noticing, hopefully here in just a few seconds, that something about your hand is changing as you place awareness on your hand. And since I can't interact with you directly, I'm going to just give you some language for it. Uh, you might be feeling like more pulsing or heat, a vibration. And ultimately what I'm looking for is do you feel more sensation in your hand as you place awareness on your hand? Yes or no in the comment box. Just give me a little feedback. Are you feeling more sensation in your hand as you place awareness on your hand? Okay. So put that hand down, lift up the other hand, left hand now. Same thing, placing awareness on this hand. Thanks, Jessica. Thanks, Sierra. Thanks, Arlette. Yep. Yeah, and look in the chat box. Everyone's feeling it. We've never done this with anybody who hasn't felt it. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, everybody, for sharing. So I want you to know this is not a party trick. So I want you to place awareness now on your left hand. And I want you to notice again at the speed of awareness. Tell me if you now feel more sensation in your left hand. 
Okay. So what I want to point to is a few things is number one, notice that putting awareness on something is creating a biological response. Okay. Like something is actually happening here. This is not a trick. This is actually happening. This is innate to every person on planet earth. And they don't know this, that this is what's happening. Okay. And if you want to test it again, put your awareness on one of your feet, your left or your right foot. And notice that it's just like that, at the speed of awareness, you're going to start noticing more sensation at your foot. Yes or no? Do you feel more sensation in that foot now? The other thing I want you to recognize as you do this is I didn't give you instructions how to use your awareness. You just knew how to do it. Everyone knows how to do this. Everyone knows how to do this. Every single person on planet Earth, it's innate to all mammals. It's innate to all animals. Okay, so what's happening here? Just to kind of give it some language, just to give a little bit of a map. You've all heard the line where your attention goes, energy flows. That's exactly what's happening. We are relocating our awareness. So mostly where we notice ourselves from is here, right? If you say, where am I? People point up here. I can't see you, but I imagine you would point up here. Like you're somewhere behind the eyes. And here's the thing, that's not where you are. That's where you've been conditioned to place your awareness. And so your awareness operates from the frequency of your mind, which is another way to say it operates from the conditioning of the mind. But notice in this moment that you took your awareness from here and you located it elsewhere because the truth about awareness is awareness is non-local and it's unconditioned. So notice this, you're actually moving your awareness, you're reorienting and you're resting into a place in space that we're calling your hand. And then there's an immediate and palpable response in our biology and physiology that we can experience, yes or no. So what we're doing here is we're creating a subtle witness with our awareness of the hand. And then we are noticing that there is vibratory sensation in our hand, which is another way to say we are now feeling the energy that's living within our biochemistry. You are literally experiencing the electricity and biochemistry within you by just moving your awareness over here. And what happens is as we continue to focus, more energy is moving there and energy also acts like a magnet for blood flow. And so we're getting actually more blood flow to the hand as well. I say this every time, but if you've ever heard of like yogis who can heal themselves faster, this is how they do it. Their, their knee hurts, they place awareness there, more energy, more blood flow, so more nutrients come to that part of the body. They heal faster. The body just knows how to heal itself. It just needs us to get the fuck out of the way. And so your conditioning doesn't allow you to experience what I'm showing you right now. And the way that we use this, yeah, somebody said mind-body connection, Bobby said. That's exactly what we're, we're connecting to here, is that there's an intelligence down here, and we can become aware of it. Your body's intelligence, doing things, it's doing thousands of things right now that you're not paying attention to. We could pay attention to them, but we're not. And so what we can do with this, and this is what the meditation will train you guys on for those of you guys who, who, who wanted it, is how to focus. Well, first of all, how to come out of your conditioned mind. Okay. Cause when we're in the conditioned mind, what happens is, and this is what happens in a lot of therapies and why it doesn't work for people is they, they talk about what's happening. Even if they bring them to the emotion, they're watching the emotion from the conditioned mind. And so what they're actually doing in that moment is they're experiencing the trauma again through their conditioning. And all that's really happening is a reenactment or a re-traumatization in that moment. Okay. If we want to stop that process, we want to actually heal. We got to come out of the conditioning of the mind. And that's what the beginning of training is on is how to actually come out and sit in what we call a spacious or awake aware state. Okay. When we do that and we're in a situation where we feel tightness in our body, which pretty much always exists for everybody, um, you can start feeling tension inside of your system, but because you're not merged with your conditioning, when you're out here in the spacious awareness, this is where the intelligence of the body takes over. And if you, again, there's some nuance here, but I'm going to just simplify here. The energy can then move. It can metabolize from our system. When the energy metabolizes our psychology, our mind, this defense it doesn't have to react. And there's just space in the body. Everything relaxes. The tension goes away, our nervous system downregulates, our mind gets very quiet, and there's a spaciousness. And now instead of being reactive, we can be responsive. 
this actually changes the vibrational frequency of the body. This will actually begin to reorient your experience of reality. And reality is just an organic hologram that's interacting with our body and our output frequency. And so if you want your reality to change, it's not about forcing your will on it. It's about actually changing how your body is orienting and then perceiving reality through its energetics. Then the mind doesn't have to defend against anything at all. And so what we see with our clients over and over again is they will be in situations that normally cause them stress because certainly we cannot control your circumstances. Let me say this again. We cannot control your circumstances. Doing this work does not mean you're going to be effortlessly rich overnight or that all your relationships are going to fix like that. However, we do see stuff like that happen all the time. And it's because things can change when you change. Things, your perceptions of reality will change your relationships. When your energy doesn't come at your spouse the way it always has and the energy changes, they just get to change. They don't have to be the provocateur or the, you know, the victim or the perpetrator anymore because you're not that way anymore. There's always a balance in energy. If you're the victim, you need a perpetrator. If you're a perpetrator, you need a victim. What happens when you drop those parts and everything feels safe, then you show up with your partner just as empty space. They get to arise in a way they've never arised before. Right, this is all like vagus nerve therapy. This is attachment work therapy for any of you guys who know these things. Like this repairs all of it. And so you do this over and over again repetitiously. And what your system learns is that your system is energetically reaching and responding, trying to get something, trying to get a bit of information, trying to template an experience. And first is doing this work by yourself, is learning the, the inner practices that allow for this type of healing to work. At the more advanced levels is doing this with other people at the level of, uh, you know, self, like a, a, you and another person, and then you at the level of group because energetically we need repair everywhere. Your trauma just doesn't happen with just yourself. It happened with other people, it happened in groups. And so we are, humans are biologically built for connection. And so we wanna learn how to safely and authentically connect with one another. And what happens is when you sit with somebody who's been practicing this for quite some time, their nervous system just operates differently. And you guys heard me say, you know, a baby is trying to map and regulate the nervous system based on how mom and dad are regulating their nervous system. But when you have parents that are unregulated, you end up with an unregulated baby, an unregulated nervous system baby. And so our bodies continue to do this. They continue to try to regulate, but in a society that's so dysregulated, not unregulated, dysregulated, in a society that's so dysregulated, we can't find our regulation. So what happens when people say they sit with masters and they feel different? Or they go around a person, they just feel safe. What they're really saying is that person's nervous system is regulated. I'm feeling that in my nervous system. And so my system down regulates. And so this is what we do. We do these practices where you sit with regulated nervous systems in your energetic signaling, just templates what's happening in that nervous system. And it gets the repair that it's been looking for. It reaches and it gets a response. It reaches and it gets a response. Then suddenly your needs come back online. You start recognizing, oh shit, I have needs. Your ability to ask for support changes. You just feel safer, more well-being, more spaciousness in your body. If these are things that you guys want in your life, then you want to talk to our team about being in one of our programs. Because again, we could teach you these things. You can understand them mentally. Wow, this is really cool. And I'm telling you right now, this requires repetition. Just like any athlete would require repetition to change their motor skills, you as a person, if you want to change your life, got to be in practices with people who are interested and committed to doing this on a regular basis, doing conditioning work on your nervous system to rehabituate how it works and then stop working on your mind alone. Although that certainly helps because then you won't reenact your trauma. So we teach both just so you guys know. And if you haven't done any mindset work, we're going to teach that to you because then you're going to, if we don't teach that to you, your mind will be out of fucking control. It's going to keep doing what it's done. So you got to bring some awareness to the, the mechanism of the mind then you start working with the body, reconditioning this mind-body connection, and boom, boom, some, some incredible magic starts happening. So if you're digging what I'm talking about, whether you're new or old to the community, our, our team can give you guidance on getting more information if you need that. However, listen, I'm going to tell you right now, we can explain this to, to you till you're blue in the face. Till we're blue in the face, to be honest. But the reality is, is that there's no teacher like your direct experience. It's the only way you're going to learn this stuff. You can try to squeeze us like, like lemons and try to get as much information from us as possible to try to learn this stuff. Here's the reality. You got to sit, you got to sit in a program and commit to doing this over a period of time within a few months, even a few weeks, you're going to see 
major changes in your life. I mean, major. You're going to be like, wow, I am operating from a completely different place. And so when the vibration changes, reality, your relationships, everything's going to start showing up differently. Your mind is going to notice this. And that's the really cool part is when you're like in a situation that normally would stress you and there's no mental stressful response. You're just like nothing. You just feel totally placid. You feel totally grounded, totally safe. And you're like, holy crap, this stuff really works. So here's the thing. The power's within you and you got to prove it to yourself. We're here to guide you into an environment that will elicit a certain response from your psychology and your, and your body in a way that you've never experienced before. And then you're going to realize I've been my own guru this whole time. You and I don't want to be your gurus. We can't fix your life or your situations. We're just two people who for 20 years have inquired about these things and have spent a, a great deal of our time and resources to learn what we are going to advocate to you in a very short period of time so that you can learn this in a very condensed period of time. And within a year or two, you're going to, you're going to be what has taken Elon and I a decade or two to learn. And we see that with our clients constantly. So again, if you are interested in this, uh, I would click that link above. It says callsatori.com and book a call. It's a 15 minute call with someone from our team. They can walk you through this stuff, explain it to you. And again, if you're listening to me and you're like, I got to learn this stuff, go register for a program. Don't wait. More information is not gonna is not gonna help you. However, if you do need more information, more time, we're gonna honor that and we're gonna support you with that. And I want you to know this is an, kind of like you gotta listen to your body and like listen to your intuition. Like, am I gonna do something that intervenes with this process in my life and take an action consistent with what I say that I want, which is to make changes? Well, nothing is coming. Nothing is coming to save you. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta reach in and find something that you feel is gonna support you in your transformation. If it's working with us, great. If it's not, please go find somebody that feels in alignment for you and go do something about it. For 20 years, I've had a mentor and a coach. I'm, I'm never too old or never too wise to have somebody mirror reality back to me and to teach me something new. It's taken me a long time to get my ego the fuck out of the way, so that I can recognize how little I know and how much I can learn if I step out of the way and help somebody mentor me and how much that accelerates my growth when I do. So we're happy to be those people for you. Again, we've taken thousands of people through these processes. We know how this stuff works and we know it's gonna work for you as long as you're willing to be committed to this process, okay? Love you guys very much. I really, really appreciate your your time and awareness. I know these are your biggest assets in this world. We don't take that lightly. Uh, please come back to these trainings if you're finding them valuable every Tuesday. Uh, at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And again, if you want help and resources and support with what's going on in your life, click callsatori.com. Let us support you and uh, find a way to be in our programs. Okay? Love you all very, very much. Happy Tuesday. We'll see you next week. Bye, everybody.